Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to tonight's second half. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, it doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into tonight's second half, shall we? All right, guys, so as... Many of you know, uh, the first upload of the day is the first half, and it's always a brand new one, usually an hour long, somewhere around there, and filled with as much information and experiences I can jam pack into an hour. Um, uploads, bonuses, I mean, and second half, usually uh, a repeat, occasionally a new one. And it is for the newer people to come, that are coming in that haven't been here. Um, tonight's second half is one of my favorite interviews I ever did with Victor, the government agent who hunted cryptids, Dogman Bigfoot, two generations, his dad and he. Um, we discuss cryptid attacks and missing 411s. So let's get into it. Victor, how are you? I'm doing great. How's everybody out there and you? I'm, I'm doing been, well. I've been away for a while and uh, had to do some things. And, uh, I'm back now and getting better. How's dialysis so, going? Good? Uh, it's, it's going. Uh, something I'm not used to, but it's a regiment that after this last go round, I have to do now, and it's just part of life, I guess. So. Right. Absolutely. So, I know <clears throat> you and I kind of talked, and I kind of wanted to just do something different than we've ever done. Um, I wanted to just chew the fat, ask you a couple things, what you thought about them, and possibly get some info um, on the background of it. But I know a lot of people are asking what uh, or if anything is going on with the book. I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of comments on that. Well, I, find, I signed the final paperwork with them, and they said that it would be out, or they hadn't given me a date yet, but they're supposed to give me a date uh, within the week is what they said. So, but I'm leaving tomorrow going to Alaska. So, uh, I should know something within the next seven to ten days. Right. Yeah. All right. So, um, it's finished and ready for them to print. Do they I'm have it? So, they them. have it? They have it. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, yeah. like you said in the very beginning, when this all, the expected date was early fall or middle fall you know it's just yeah. we're not even in fall yet um we're closing in on it but so yeah. it's going to be as planned um which is cool yeah so. 38 chapters and uh, it's going to be in hardback and i'm not sure the price yet they said that they would set the price but it's supposed to be a really nice book nice uh, it has pictures. It's, you know, 
pages where pictures are supposed to be some kind of special paper that makes them look real, not just plain paper. Like it's colored, like it's on, like a printed picture. So you can see that. That's going to be exciting. I'm excited. I really am. I, I, I said something about it the other day when you told me a little bit. And I was like, you know, I'm just as excited to read this as anyone is because, you know, I have limited knowledge of what's in the book. And I'm happy for that because that'll, uh, that'll fit good, you know, so. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Alaska. That is not for your work because you are now officially fully retired. They will never I'm call you back. I've got a letter. They will never call me again. Right. This, is, this is something that I wanted to do for a long time and never got the opportunity to do. And me and three of my sons are going up to Alaska to research do a little research on my own of a place that you know about. Yep. And we talked I about get, we talked about actually a few times on this channel with you actually. So yeah, yeah. And I'm actually going up there and got permission from the from the natives that we can come up there and spend uh, seven days. So. That's going to be a, an experience. Uh, to everybody who don't know, all my kids are at home with me in Colorado now and living with me. After this last episode I went on, I kind of needed some help, and they're all out here with me. So they're actively searching for work, and but three of them is going on this trip with me. So I'll be taken care of. Right. And ironically enough, that noise in the background is not a bird. That is one of his kids' dogs playing with a chew toy. So. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. That's not one of my dogs. So it's one of my dogs that ate it. <laughs> you're going to... Um, because we've talked about it numerous times. You're going to Portage, and you're yep, going to check Portage, out. Alaska. One of your kids wants to see, or all three of those guys want to see three a Sasquatch. Want to see a Sasquatch. And supposedly this is what ran everybody out of that town. And I've always heard about it. I always wanted to go there and never got a call in my entire career to ever get the chance to go to that place and uh, it's just something that I want to do and since my boys just got to my home and they got into my files and started reading uh, kind of got to where they wanted to see if it's really true right so I figured this would probably be the best chance to prove something to them. So we're going to make the trip. Uh, leaving tomorrow, flying out tomorrow, and we'll be back 10 days. That's going to be exciting. Yep. So I hope I have some service up there where I can call. I don't know that I will, but. Yeah, it'll uh, definitely be. I'm a little jealous. You did invite me, but with school coming, I can't go. And yeah, I'd like. I was to, hoping but, you could. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to do that. It's a place that I'd love to go, especially after talking to the subscriber from Alaska, and she sent me a bunch of beautiful pictures from that area, and it was just truly amazing to see, you know, how beautiful that that land is up there. And uh, yeah, I think people get a people get a. a, a they don't really realize that it's not just snow. It's actually very, there's green mountains and just beautiful land and beautiful rivers. And it's gorgeous up there. So it's the last frontier. It's the America's last frontier. So yep. 
that trap. So, well, I um, I've been covering. You have sort of tried to catch up on the channel because with everything that's been going on um, and lack of time on your end, I've been covering a couple of different um, cases. One being Cott County, Tennessee. Uh, that's what we're going to do tonight, guys. We're just going to talk about a couple of different things, and I want to get Victor's view and insight on what is going on. So, I mean, as you are aware, a guy was torn apart on the 1st of April, and then two, month, two and a half months later, uh, on, I think, the 18th, she, uh, Amber Miller, was torn up. Um, arms were removed. Leg, same as Tony Aaron's, but he had lacerations. Um, the the uh, medical examiner claimed that the body of Amber Miller had so many holes they lost track of. Um, now, when I mentioned that to you, you told me right off the bat that there was agents sent there at one time. Yes. Uh, on April, let me get the date. I got it right here. Oh. Where that? Okay, I got a lot of windows open on my thing. So I sit there on uh, April 18th, and he started out, he sent two agents because we had a, or they had a werewolf that was one of ours that was within a quarter of a mile of Jimtown Road at the time of this incident. And there was other cattle that was killed, and then this man came up murdered. And this werewolf was very elusive. They, they started out with two agents down there, and as time went on, they couldn't, they couldn't ever get this werewolf pinned down to an area. And by late July, they had 14 agents trying to trap this one werewolf. And I feel like this werewolf was probably responsible for these deaths on account of the mutilation and the cut wounds that I'm looking at on the bodies that I'm seeing. Uh, I would just about bet that it was a werewolf. It possibly could have been a dog man, but it wasn't. It ain't dogs at all, neither one of them. I, I'm, I still got my work computer and I'm looking at autopsy photos and the wounds that after the bodies has been cleaned up and I've got pictures of the bodies before and where they was picked up at and pictures in the field that I can see and I can tell you by the wounds that this was no pack of dogs. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. and then, you know what's crazy with me, I because I've been covering it since... I, I think two two weeks after Tony Aarons was found dead in April 1st. Um, but the autopsy reports come back, and they the sheriff down there, Armando Fuentes, wanted to blame, for some reason, he the, the Tony Aarons' body had methamphetamine and amphetamine in it, and he said, I believe this was a contributing factor to his death. Well... That makes no sense. And then no. Amber Miller was her dad was a, a sheriff or a deputy who was killed on duty, 
and they kind of they kind of said like you know the newspaper was just putting a lot of filler in there like well Tony Aarons had the meth and this and that so it was his fault and then uh Amber Miller was no no saint either you know her dad passed away she went a little you know wild at a young age and it was just I don't know. I've never, I've never really heard or read anything so distasteful. I guess the best word would be. Um, yeah. Because anytime, I, I don't know. It just, it's, it's very distasteful to me. It's just filler. Well, it's filler, and it's it's a way of. Because I had a guy on the show. I don't know if you caught that. I know you've got you know with all the kids there. But I had a guy that he came on and he ended up talking to uh, a homeless guy that lived down by the trestles. And the homeless guy said, you know, they're not dogs down there. That's what they want you to think. Be careful on your motorcycle when you head out because this thing will come out of the woods and take you right off of that thing. Um, which just tells you that they've seen it or they've heard it and they know that it's not a dog. Yeah. So that's a pretty crazy case. Um, do, is there any, and did they catch that or are they still, is that an active ongoing case? It's an active ongoing case. Uh, as of today, they still have three agents it's supposed to be one, you know, three agents that have ran this werewolf out of the area. Uh, they are in Arkansas now. Mm. That's so crazy. They have, they have ran this thing a long ways, but even when they had 14 agents, they never got it surrounded. Right. They, and, and this, this one is a, is one they can, they can pinpoint because they got machinery to do it and they couldn't get their cells in positions. This is a smart wolf. He is very, very smart. Now being and, chipped, what would send him over the edge like that? Cause usually it's dog men, you know what I mean? Or yeah. an well, unchipped anything, I, but this is chipped in through the program. Yeah. It, it, I mean, there's going to be bad ones in every bunch. I, I, I truly believe that. Right. Uh, for the most part, though, I would I would put my life in the hands of any one of them that's been through the program. Uh, but that being said, right here is a case of one that has went over the edge and the only thing that now for him is to be killed. They've just got to catch him. He's got to make a mistake, and they've got to be in the place when he makes that mistake. And so far, he hasn't. And these agents are wore down to an edge. The three original that was sent to get him, or two of the originals, are still on the trail. And one more that was added in July is still on the trail and they're in Arkansas now. Hmm. So, and you know, but even though they can see where he's at, they can't get around him enough people to box him in to, to somebody <clears throat> to, for an agent to get a shot off at him. Right. Right. And kill him. Yeah, that's but no, he hadn't taken no agents out, and he hadn't done anything since the July twelfth uh, attack on animals or humans. Right. Yeah, so. it's it's. I mean, when I when I read the Tony Aaron's, when I saw the news, and I was like, wow, and it was very small. It was a very small news article. Um, and as they described him, you know, they, they said lacerations across his body, partially devoured. This guy was literally 
chatting with someone on the phone at 9.30 and found three hours later by a mailbox dead um, yeah. and just torn to pieces. So, I mean, dogs, any dog, and I've had people on here to, to validate this that have worked with dogs, it's going to take a lot longer than three hours to just rip bone and muscle. And, I mean, it makes no sense. The the wild dog or the, the supposed wild dogs, not really wild, but, you know, um, domesticated dogs owned by Charles Owensby were the ones that were licking Amber Miller's wounds. Well, if they were freaking as vicious as the news made them sound, they would have attacked the Good Samaritan, without a doubt. That's right. Yeah. They would have went after them also. Yeah. I mean, none of it makes any sense to me. So, I don't know. Well, that's good. Once, I hope... a, once an animal gets a taste for human blood, it goes after that oh, more than once. Right. And I hope and, they get it. I really do, because this... Yeah, I do too. There, there was another attack though that happened in Tennessee, and it was right close to the actually. Uh, oh, it happened on July 18th at about two o'clock in the morning. Uh, Memphis. Uh, he was. He was, He lived through it. And he told them it wasn't dogs, but they said it was dogs that cut him and done everything to him. But he lived through it and said that he, they, they said that eight dogs had attacked him. And he told them no, that it was, uh, just, just two animals that attacked him. And that was, uh, that was that. Uh, right close, to just blocks from Elvis Presley's mansion, where this took place. So it was right on the Mississippi River. So this yeah. was just after the attack on her, right? And they was pushing this animal towards Arkansas. So this could have been the same, the same animal. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. So, that guy's name was Moore, I think. Okay, I'll have to check into that. Um, yeah. So now with, we're going to stay in that area a little bit. Um, being that you've been an agent for so long, you have seen a lot. Um, now, Hurricane Ida just ripped through. Louisiana and a lot of the southern states down there it actually the tail end pretty much screwed New York City up for a day um, and Ida fell on the same day that Katrina did 16 years earlier was there a lot of um, activity to, uh, after Katrina and do you think there'll be a lot of activity after Ida? Right after it, after the after the water started to subside, there was a good bit of activity. People was displaced. People was people was living in tents. You know, trying to get their homes back and everything. And there was a lot of activity. Uh, we got a ton of reports, but we didn't get a, we didn't get a ton of calls. Uh, we was getting reports out from down there probably every day, but they wasn't going through the proper channels to get us involved. Hmm. Uh, we probably, after Katrina... We probably had seven cases, but we probably had 35 reports that we seen right. that, that we felt was legitimate. 
and there was probably 50 others that could have been. And I'm just throwing that number out there. I'm not certain on the number. Right, right. But I, I, mean, I, people, I remember it was high yeah, because we, it was right after right after all that happened and the weather cleared and people was going back to see their homes when they could get in there and they didn't have homes to go back to. Yeah. And they was living in tents and whatever they could and trying to rebuild. And these reports was coming in, but... Like I said, they wasn't going through the proper channels. Uh, we can see the reports on the when they go to the police, but if they don't follow the proper channels, we can't. We couldn't get involved. Hmm. So yeah, I almost I almost wonder how many, you know, like you said, people were displaced. Um, you know, rebuilding living in tents outside of their home, you know, just after the fact, trying to rebuild. And I wonder how many unreported cases went on, you know, just oh, just gosh. the unreported ones, you know what I mean? Like if there were, you know, cases reported, imagine that. Or, and how easy it is for the local government to hide it, because it seems like the local government wants to hide a yeah, lot. They don't, want, they don't want to, that to be known that this is going on in anywhere. Yeah. That, that, you know, no place won't be. Tennessee uh, is the same way. You know, I really think that, I don't think, I think that Fuentes, Armando Fuentes, once again, it's re-election year, and I think in Tennessee that he's trying to handle it internally or did try to handle it internally until your guys came down, but because he's, I, he doesn't have an answer. There's, no definitive reason or definite reason uh, of a, and they arrested the poor guy. They arrested the poor guy. No, I'm not going to say he's a poor guy because he's not a good person. You know, regardless of the fact of him being a dirtbag, he doesn't need that to be attached to, you know, I mean, they really, when they had Owens be locked up on a, on a marijuana charge, that's all they could get him on. Um, and took DNA from everything. Uh, even they even dug a dead dog up in his yard um, that was like 19 years old. It was just you know. Yeah, I think a lot of these are just being handled internally that they don't want your help. I think you know the only reason why you guys even knew about it is because there was a second case. That article that happened with Tony Aarons was so small in the very beginning that it was almost like they wanted it to just disappear, and then yeah. boom, another case happens. Yeah. So. Yeah, but the Aaron's case was actually called in to the to the uh, Department of Natural Resources. That one was called in. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because you guys came in. Yep. Okay. April yeah. Well, I I killed that werewolf. No, Tony and, Aaron's. Tony Aaron's. That recent case that just happened. Oh. In Tennessee. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the little boy. No. Oh. Um, I'm sorry. That was the Kentucky. That's a different case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kentucky. that's Kentucky. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they, they, it just doesn't make any sense that why yeah. they would want to just keep it a secret. So, Well, they don't want it to be known, and they cover it up. And, you know, unless this, according to what I'm reading here on what my computer it says that it was actually called into the Department of Natural Resources by the family. Hmm. That uh, they asked them to come out and search, do a search. That's incredible. Okay. This whole thing is just incredible. There's This year has been a bad year for, for the public to return back into nature. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, they've been missing out of the, out from in the woods for a year. Yeah, and and the animals, you know, that did attack people. There's their, you know, they're out there that does attack people, but they're so far and so few between. Yeah, yeah. And it's... You're, you're you're safe out there for the most part. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, for the amount of cases that have happened, it just seems like that there's a lot because there, there's more than normal that we're hearing about. Um, but it, it, there's the, the case that baffles me, and I covered it just the same with the Cott County, Tennessee, is the Yosemite family. Um, the father, mother, uh, daughter, and dog, all found mysteriously dead um, on a trail that is used to look for wildflowers. There's like a beautiful wild wildflower preserve or something out there. And initially they treated the case as a hazmat case, uh, saying that there was carbon monoxide coming from caves or blue algae in the water uh, of the river and stuff like that, or the lake or whatever. Um, but they weren't even near the water. And the officials or the investigators down there didn't find any carbon monoxide uh, from any caves. Now, the thing that gets me is how they're not even saying if there was any... Um, if there was any, you know, physical damage to the bodies. They had mentioned a possible rattlesnake bite, but that's not going to kill all four things, you know. Um, and a rattlesnake isn't going to bite all four people, or three people and a dog in one no. sitting, you know. That's the only thing that's mentioned for physicality in this case. And it's a very strange case because it's almost like they went out hiking and poof, they died. Um, now the FBI, I guess, is looking into uh, their phones, the guy's phones, the father. Um, but there's no cell service out there. There's nothing out there. So I don't know. What do you think about that? What's What's your take on that? Personally, well, that's, that's kind of bizarre. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking to see if we've got anything on that at all. Uh, the only thing I'm finding is the Forest Service warned of a toxic algae yep. that had been found in the Merced River and urged people not to swim, wait, or allow their pets to drink the water. Uh, no, but no, no marks on the bodies could be found. Although, it, you know, so they're like ruling out the rattlesnake bites. Yep, it's ruling out dogman, Sasquatch. I mean, it just I mean, makes it's no out, sense. It's, it's a baffling yeah. case. Uh. No gunshot wounds or blunt, blunt force trauma, according to the coroner. No suicide notes, nothing like that for the investigators. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, and like the newest, the newest update <clears throat> was yesterday, and um, it's it's the same. It's literally. The same article from three weeks ago, or two yeah. and a half weeks, word for word, hazmat, hazardous area, hazard, like, okay, yes, it's definitely a friggin' hazardous area, but you have not told us what killed this poor family. I mean, the, oh, tox, I got toxicology report right here. Yeah. And there was, I don't it, think they said carbon monoxide. There was no carbon monoxide found in the toxicology I, report. There, there, uh, all, the, all the toxicology reports is good. On all of them. Nothing whatsoever. Because yeah. they even did the dog thinking, which makes, it's very strange because yeah. if the dog did drink the water from the blue algae, in the uh, Merced River there. Um, yeah. Yeah, he'd get sick, but he wouldn't infect the whole family. No, it wouldn't. 
and it wow. takes it takes time for blue algae to kill. Like it's you have to really consume a shitload of it or be in that water for, you know, I mean, we're not talking an hour. You you know, you've got a couple days of of uh activity in that area and that that's what's going to kill you. But they they yeah. were out in a day. I mean, they went on a day hike. They were in yeah. out well, um that day it's reported that temperatures was 109 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. But their bodies. They had no water. Sign. They had drinking water. They had everything. Yeah. They had. They had everything. They. Had, I mean. And they were good parents. So like, if if it was that hot, <clears throat> I'm thinking they would have stopped. They definitely hydrated themselves and the baby and the dog. You know, they weren't they weren't uh, neglectful people from what the friends say. They were decent, respecting people. I it yeah. is completely this one is Boy, this straight is from twi Twilight Zone, you know. Mm. I don't know what to think about this one. I mean, it, there's no signs of any kind of trauma to the body. Yeah. Uh, I I'm thinking about one thing. Is uh, and I read an article. I shared the article with you before I, I narrated it about that theory from uh, the Great White Brotherhood or whatever about um, these portals, but they're not really portals. They're almost like a, uh, a frequency vibration and they're able to shut down and uh, contaminate or not contaminate, but take over the people and die without any sort of wounds. It makes no what. sense. I mean, remember that article that I shared with you about the Great White, from the Great yeah. White Brotherhood? And, yeah. And that almost, to me, fits the yeah. ticket because yeah. the way they described... Going into a portal. Yeah, the way they described how the people would come back, there would be no yeah. no, no wounds no. or anything or just... Nothing done, they'd just be dead. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. During your time... With the agency, uh, how many times or how many calls did you guys get about portals or strange things like this that had no involvement with the big three that you were faced with? Uh, we got several calls on stuff that people said there were portals, but it as far as me ever seeing one, it never happened. Okay. I never, I never walked into one. I never seen a portal. I, we, in my time, I never had an agent or knew of an agent that walked into one. Is there uh, any? Is there any division of our government that deals with these things directly? Like, I mean, you've got you guys that deal with. There was another branch that dealt with things more paranormal than ours. And uh, they was manned by about the same number of men that we had. And, uh, but, uh, like I said, you know, sometimes we would get a call and go. Because there'd be a lot of times there'd be cattle mutilations, and the people would say that the cow was there five minutes ago, and then they come back ten minutes later, and the cow's laying there and it's butchered. Yeah. And they they don't they couldn't understand how something could happen like that in that length of time. Yeah. I think and, like when me and you talked, I. I think that our time is nothing compared to like like if a one of those cows is in a portal. Yeah. Ten minutes may pass here, but you know it may be long enough time for them to do the dissection and the you know 
cauterization and whatever or not of wounds and their uh and then just throw it back without none the wiser and thinking hey it's only been 10 minutes what the hell did this you know but in yeah. all actuality it could have been a day you know or an hour or two yeah there's just it's it's very strange things that i remember when i started the channel i really i i think i was blind because i had my encounter and i believed in the paranormal and i believed in all the other stuff but um i wanted to just look at everything as being earthly you know like the the sasquatch dogman um werewolf what have you is earthly but then you know these portals are for some reason i didn't even really think about them you know they weren't part of my in my brain it was yeah and now it's i the the connection because i think the connection is because i know sometimes some of something comes out of these portals and it's definitely not something a human wants to run into yeah i think that and that happens more times than what we care to imagine yeah uh i think a lot of the missing 411 I think that a lot of them can be explained to that, walking yeah. into a portal. Uh, things that's not attached to people is left behind, and usually it's only the skin tight stuff that goes with them. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times. That article is amazing. The, yeah. I, that, you've, yeah. <laughs> that freaking blew my mind how well thought that theory was from that organ did did you you knew the or knew of the guy that bob guy sanders yeah or i know of bob sanders and i read a lot about that their their theories and stuff and i mean there's stuff that is kind of eh but then a lot of it is just like wow this is this makes a lot of sense this makes more yeah. sense than you know what it's what you really think yeah you know I mean, <clears throat> you've got to believe that this stuff exists because it does. Yeah. And, and leave it till I see it. Well, seeing it and living through it's one thing. Uh, it, it, what you see out there sometimes would just blow your mind. I mean, some things that walk out of the ocean, yep. and some things that just walk in our woods. I mean, some things that walk in our deserts. If you just, I mean, you, people just don't believe what could possibly be there. But it is. Yeah. yeah. And fortunately, I've lived the life of it. And well, in my book, people can read. It's uh, definitely, yeah, it's definitely yeah. going to be a good read. I'm excited about it. I, I get emails. I probably get, I probably get an email every other day about, hey, when's the book? Have you heard from Victor? Tell Victor I'm praying for him. Um, the comment section. Like when I made mention of you the other day, um, I it was crazy the amount of people that said, hey, we, we want to hear from him. We haven't heard from him in a while. This, this, and that. Um, the amount of support. And I think it's because you got something different to offer rather than, you know, the 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 basic regular encounter you know you've lived the yeah. life and seen things that most people uh, dream about or have nightmares about <laughs> yeah so, yeah i still have them so yeah don't feel bad <laughs> right. so what do you think uh what do you think your 
results are going to be. Can I get a prediction of Alaska from you? How do you think that's going to work out? Well. Or how uh, would you like it to work out? Let's put it that way. What, how would I like it to work out? Yeah. And then how do you think it's going to? Because you got you're you're very intelligent and you've lived the life, so you know what to what to expect. Well, uh, I hope to be able to show three of them a Sasquatch, because with all reports that come out of that area, that's what that's what ran all the people out of this town. And according to the postmaster who stayed there the longest, he's seen numerous times, and he he is he stayed in the the one building for a year by himself, and he was terrified every night with them trying to get in everything. And he, he you know he he's passed now. But, some of his stories that he left with the natives up there uh, are just unreal. But getting the natives to tell you them is something else. And I was able to break through and, and be able to hear some of them, some of what he what he was telling, and it was it was terrifying. But like I said, we're I'm taking. Three of my boys are going with me, and they want to see one. They want to. They've read some of my files, and my dad's files, and they've. They want to experience what I've seen, and be able to come back. And I figure this would probably be our best bet. I can get in up there, and you know we're going to stay. We ain't going in there hunting. We're going to stay there. We're in the town, and where the old town used to be. And we're going to not make us a place where the old barn is, and that's where we're going to stay. And I'm going to set us up a perimeter where hopefully we'll know if something comes into it. And I'll be the only one there. That's one bad thing. I'm going to be the only one they're going to be allowed to be on. Of course, I can out shoot all my boys, but I've got older. Now, I ain't as good as I once was, and I know that. But they trust me enough to go with me. Uh, I hope to show one. I hope in the seven days that we're there that I'm able to let them see full, a full body Sasquatch. That's what my goal would be. Not a, not a half body, not, not a, you know, an arm, a leg, a head. I want you to see the full thing. And, uh, that's my. Yeah. That'll be I. You know, I really think it'll be a perfect trip for you guys, even if you don't see anything. I've I got think, seven days to prove my boys. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, and hopefully, according to the natives, it's people that went in there and tried to stay off the fishing boat for a night. Says that they can't stay on close to that cabin because they have to go back out and get their boats and leave on account of the activity. Hmm. And the fishermen don't even go in there, right? On account of it into that code so yeah that's crazy yeah so well you're coming up when i get back i think i think you're definitely gonna i think you're definitely gonna um are you there yeah i'm here okay.
All right. Um, if you do come across anything, or at least if there is service, uh, shoot me a text so I know um, that you're okay and that you, you, you may have a story to come back with. Because I know that's something that you said to me the last day, the other day when we talked, that you said, who knows, I may have a story to share when I come back. That's right. Which would be a whole different a whole different scenario than what you're used to because you're I ain't hunting this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm almost curious of how the boys are gonna handle it. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, that's two of them I'm not worried about too much. One of them I'm just I'm anxious to see how he reacts if we do get to see one. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So, well, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about, or is there kind of? Uh, just let everybody know that just as soon as I get a date on the book, which will probably be, I'm hoping next month, is what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Is, uh, or I'm hope maybe later this month even. Uh, like I said, it's in the publisher's hands now. It's been approved to be published. Uh, like I said, it's 38 chapters. Uh, every chapter's got pictures. Uh, uh, 38 different stories. Some of them, a couple of them, three of them I think you've heard. Yeah, three or four of them maybe you've heard, and uh, but I don't think you've seen the pictures on none. I've I, only well, seen. I know you I've only seen, seen a, none of the pictures. I've only seen a couple pics that you showed me. Yeah, yeah. But you seen the werewolf baby? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Which was absolutely <laughs> disgusting. And that's exactly what you did when you when you when you showed that picture to me. I said, "That is friggin' the most disgustingest thing I've ever seen in my life." <laughs> so. Yep. But anyway. Well, don't uh, hang up before we let you go, because um, I'm gonna shoot the shit with you some more. Just okay. About, just about our stuff. Um, I I know that you probably made everybody's night tonight uh well i i'm just sorry i've been away for so long but well, things like happen. i said government called me back one more time and i went and done what i needed to do so, at least this time you're done i mean you're I'm done yeah and it's kind of it's yeah. crazy because they they just in my eyes even though you're compensated, you are very well compensated, but yeah. you know, I, I think they, they pretty much rode you hard and put you back out in the pasture with not really a care, just in my eyes. They, they pretty much got what they needed out of your body and, uh, just move yeah. on, you know, and that's, yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of the way I'm seeing it now because I mean, I have to take dialysis after this last adventure. I mean, yeah. I, you know, them two gunshot wounds destroyed my kidneys. And that wasn't all that I had, but it was enough to destroy my, destroy me. Uh, I guess I'm lucky to be alive, but. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I truly miss Victor a lot. Um, some of my most interesting conversations I've had in the last five years have been with Victor. And uh, he became an amazing friend. Uh, I truly hope you guys enjoyed this one. Anyway, with that, Thank you for supporting the channel. It is your support, after all, that helps the channel to continue to grow and go. And honestly, what well, gives people a place to share their experiences, ideas, and theories judgment-free. 
just simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, friends. These creatures are real, they're out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about. It may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and as Victor would say, get out there and enjoy it. God bless.